listen, Devontae Smith is a stud. Don't worry about him. He's going to get his balls. Dallas still stinks. You're by the way, King Dingbat here, and happy victory Monday to all you Dingbats out there. Because the Eagles, the Eagles go 1-0, beating the Detroit Lions, and we got a lot to talk about because people are worried about Devontae Smith. They're worried about Devontae Smith, but I'm telling you, Devontae Smith is a stud. Don't worry about him. He will get his balls. Now, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure to hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe for daily Eagles content, NFL content. We do this every day. We stream every Eagles game. You know how we do it. And if you're, you know, you've been around for a while, you've been subscribed for a while, just double check, double moonwalk check, and make sure you're still subscribed. Now, I'm going to get right into it, and we're going to start with injury news, okay? This sucks. This is horrible news. You hate to hear this about any Eagle player. Any player really in the NFL. I hate hearing about injuries. But Nick Sirianni has confirmed uh, torn ACL for Derek Barnett. Now, we saw Derek Barnett limp off the field. He was limping, looked like, to the blue tent or to the locker room. Uh, he was walking on his own. So when you see a guy walking on his own like that, you'll oftentimes think, ah, it's probably not that bad. But sometimes... It's bad. A torn ACL is the rest of the year, so we're going to lose Derek Barnett. Now, I have my issues with Derek Barnett. No question about it. I, you know what I know. I've said it a thousand times. But losing any player does not help your team, does not help the depth on the team. And Derek Barnett was a rotational piece on that defensive line. And so I hate to see him get hurt. I hate to see him out. That sucks. I was hoping that Derek Barnett, maybe being like a contract year, you know, because he's on a one-year deal for the Eagles, I was hoping he would he would show us something. But he's hurt. It's a shame. We wish him the best. And now it's time for Teron Jackson to step up, okay? And we're going to need somebody to step up in that front four uh, because they did not get much pressure by themselves yesterday. It was something I didn't like at all. Now... There were a lot of things that I liked in this game, okay? Let me tell you about some of the things I liked. Uh, first of all, A.J. Brown. Worth every cent, worth every penny uh, he was worth. I mean, he went out there. He reminded, he looked more like T.O. to me than anybody that has been an Eagle since. He was, he's bigger, he's faster, he's stronger than all the other defensive players on the field. Uh, he's fantastic. He's going to have a monster year. He's going to have a monster year. And he had, what, 10 catches yesterday, 155 yards. Great day for him. He was absolutely fantastic. And why did he get the ball so much? Because he was open. Because he was the one running the slants. Because he was the guy yesterday. For whatever reason, they could not stop him. And I think a lot of teams are going to have trouble stopping A.J. Brown, okay? Also, Miles Sanders. I thought this was one of Miles Sanders' best games in a few years. Miles Sanders stays healthy. Miles Sanders is on that field. I said it. Miles Sanders will have 1,200 yards. He will have a career year. Uh, because Miles Sanders, even in a bad year, even when we're complaining about Miles Sanders, uh, Miles didn't do that, Miles didn't do this, Miles Sanders averages 5.5 yards a carry. Now, he's already got his touchdown. Nobody can cry about him not having touchdowns. He went out. He ran really well. Averaged seven and a half yards a carry yesterday. And to me, you should give him the ball more. I think the Eagles should have given him the ball more. But a fantastic game from him. I thought Jalen Hurts was really good. You know, the, the thing with Jalen Hurts is this. Um, I, I don't want Jalen Hurts running as much as he did yesterday. 17 attempts he ran, okay? Now, when play breaks down and you you know, you know have to make something out of nothing, uh, go do what you got to do. But I don't really want him doing design runs and stuff like that. Cause, not because he can't do it, because he can. But I just am afraid he's going to get hurt. I don't want him to get hurt. But, you know, Seth Joyner made a great point yesterday. A lot of these quarterbacks get hurt more in the pocket than they do on the run. It's true. I think back to Randall Cunningham. Back when Randall Cunningham in the first was first quarter, first game versus Green Bay, Bryce Pop hits him in the knee, 
because he's in the pocket and the whole lead up to Randall Cunningham, that whole uh, training camp and going into that season was Cunningham's got to stay in the pocket more. He's got to stay in the pocket more. That's why when Cunningham came back, he had the let me be me hats. I don't know if you guys remembered. I had one of those hats. Hell yeah, I had one of those hats. But uh, he got hurt in the pocket. Um, Jalen Hurts last year got rolled on his ankle in the pocket. So, yeah, you know, I think you've, you've got to live and die with what a guy does. Jalen Hurts got away a lot with his feet that gave us a lot of first downs. He kept plays alive that other teams would never be able to do with the quarterbacks they have. So it's one of those things that, you know, I like to see it less because I don't want him to get hurt. But you can't take something away from a guy's arsenal that he does really well. So I... I'm okay with it going forward. Just hope that, you know, it's more when, hey, there's nothing there. The play's breaking down. I'm going to go. I, I, I can live with that. Um, but I thought Jalen Hurts was fantastic. He started, I mean, they started 0-5 in the first drive. Wasn't good. They, the whole team was out of sync on that first drive, okay? First series, both, both offense and defense, totally out of sync. So, um, you know, I thought after that, Jalen Hurts was really good. I, I liked to play Jalen Hurts. Was he perfect? No. But I thought Jalen Hurts showed me a lot yesterday. And I, I I'm, overall, I was fine with him. I was fine with his play. I thought he did good. No turnovers. I can't I can't argue with that. Um, Marcus Epps, uh, Gardner, uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, I thought they both were really good. Uh, even uh, James Bradbury, another guy, man. Bradbury pick six. I thought I thought he was really good. Kaiser White. I thought he was really good. He deflected the ball that James Bradbury picked off into that pick six. Um, the three series. I think it was like three series after the first drive, where the defense was actually blitzing. They were actually aggressive. And you know what? I was like, hey, you know what? That that this doesn't look that bad. Then they got away with it. Okay. Those are all things I like. Uh, about the Eagles. Uh, here's another thing I liked. A lot of people are crying about Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis. Well, Jordan Davis looks like shit. Jordan Davis looks like this. Jordan Davis. Do you know that when Jordan Davis was in, the Detroit Lions run offense went from over four yards a carry to two and a half yards a carry. So when Davis was in, they could only average two and a half yards a carry. And there were times where you could see he pushed, he pushed the pile back. So the problem with Jordan Davis, he's got to get more snaps. You got to, he's got to play more. You got to play him more. So hopefully they will. Now maybe some of that lack of snaps had to do with the Eagles thinking we're up 17, they're going to throw more. Uh, maybe that was what it was. But I want to see Jordan Davis get more snaps. Some of the things that I did not like, uh, I'll give you my number one, my number one issue with yesterday's game. I did not like the way Jonathan Gannon utilize that defense. I do not like the wishy-washy, I'll be aggressive here, then I'm going to back off here, then I'm here, then I'm here. I think you have to be aggressive all the time. I, I don't care. When it's seven, when you're up 38 to 21, you don't let Jared Goff come out and come back. I mean, you know, there was like four drives in a row where they're sitting there scoring touchdowns on every drive and you're rushing for there's no stunts there's nothing it's just straight up rushing for they know how to block it and you and, and he's just picking you apart why not stick with the aggressiveness that worked on the first three on those three drives when led to james bradbury's picks that's why do you get away from it i don't understand it last year we blitzed the least out of every team we can't do that this year. There were times where this defense, with Reddick, with Kaiser White, with James Bradbury, with Epps, with uh, Gardner Johnson, with all the upgrades that we've made, they looked like the defense that we had with baby arms, Alex Singleton. Okay? I have a problem with that. So, I my biggest problem is Jonathan Gannon. I don't have the patience for him. If you don't figure this out... If you're not going to go out and become more aggressive, start utilizing guys. We have Hassan Reddick, who has sat there, was on two different teams, two years in a row, double-digit sacks. Didn't do anything yesterday. I don't even think he got close to the quarterback. That's unacceptable. you got to figure out a way to utilize him better. So Jonathan Gannon, to me, is the biggest problem. He was my number one concern coming into the season. He remains my number one concern. And if his defense plays like this against Minnesota, which we'll talk about this week, 
He's gonna, we're going to get killed. We're going to get killed. The Eagles did not play well enough to beat Minnesota yesterday. They've got to be better. they got to fix things, and they will. But Jonathan Gannon is my number one concern. Now, I want to talk about Devontae Smith for a second because a lot of people are upset. Devontae Smith didn't get the ball. Why didn't Devontae Smith get the ball? Is Devontae, you know, we even get, I don't know why people, I think these are just trolls, probably Cowboy fans, acting like Eagle fans saying, we should never have drafted Devontae Smith. We should never have drafted Devontae Smith. What are you talking about? They're fitting a gold jacket for my man right now. The guy's a stud. He's an absolute star. He's an absolute star. You you don't, don't, you don't believe me? But take, listen to what my man Nick Sirianni, my Canolian coach. Look, listen to what he said. Devontae Smith is a great playmaker. Not a good playmaker, a great playmaker. Nick Sirianni agrees they need to get Smith more involved. We all know they need to get Smith more involved. They do. But I will say this. Sometimes when you have really good players, it just works out that way. One week you get a guy who will have a big game. The next week you have a guy, he gets a big game. Think of, you know, all the good duels or duo top wide receivers that have played. They all don't have 10 receptions each week together. It doesn't happen. If you look at the way the Eagles threw the ball yesterday, Goddard had three catches. Devontae Smith had zero. Uh, the one catch Devontae had, they called back. There was another pass interference. There was another ball batted down. And I, I forget what the other one was. I think it was the throw that, that was thrown out of bounds. That he, It wouldn't have been in bounds anyways. Um, so basically, Devontae had four, four, uh, four passes thrown his way. He should have had more. Ah! I'm in complete agreement with you. But I got to say this. Um, Devontae Smith will get his. The only other receiver besides uh, A.J. Brown to catch anything was Pascal. He had one catch for a few yards that gave them a third down conversion. Other than that, I don't think another receiver caught a ball. It just worked out that way. The way that the Detroit Lions were coming at us, the way they were blitzing, they started running those slants early to A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown's ability to get five, six, seven yards after the catch was a big deal for the Eagles. Then after, you know, uh, Detroit's worrying about him and his slants, they go over the top with uh, him downfield on a beautiful bomb. I mean, uh, you know, people want to talk about great catches. It was a beautiful pass to A.J. Brown by by uh, Jalen Hurts. Look where that ball is placed. Perfect pass. So, um I, I am not worried about AJ Brown. If we're if we're four, if this is like week four and he's got fifteen catches on the year, ten catches on the year, yeah, then we can talk. I just think it's just how it worked out. It's just the way it played out. Next week he could go off for ten catches, and and AJ Brown could have five. So it's just the way it works out. I would not worry about AJ Brown one little bit. Okay. We don't have anything to worry about. We're sitting there one and zero. The rest of the division is all beatable. Dallas is in complete chaos. We'll get to that in the next video. And uh, yeah, I think the Eagles are sitting pretty. So those are kind of my final thoughts about this game. It is time for me to look forward to the Minnesota Vikings. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. You know, going into this Minnesota game, I, I really think this is a big week for Jonathan Gannon. He's going to have to show us that he knows how to utilize the talent he has on defense. He's got to show us that he can be aggressive and that he can stay aggressive. If you're not putting pressure on uh, Kirk Cousins, you're going to get lit up. Justin Jefferson's going to go off. So he's going to have to find a way. That front four has to find a way to get pressure. It does. And he's got to find a way to generate pressure if they're not getting home. So it's going to be, to me, maybe the biggest week of Jonathan Gannon's career as an Eagles defensive coordinator. With that said, Denzel Washington, out.